On November 23, 2018, around 9.30 p.m., police in Marietta, Georgia received a 911 distress call from a man stating he needed help. 911, this is the police. Help. Help. I can't talk right now. Help. Help. When police arrive, they hear someone faintly calling for help from an upstairs bedroom. They immediately rushed up and found Mitchell Jones lying propped up against a wall, covered in blood, saying he was shot. However, there were no obvious gunshot wounds. When paramedics arrived shortly after, they discovered Mitchell had been stabbed multiple times. When asked who did this to him, Mitchell Jones was unable to give a proper response, only stating that he's got my phone, he's got my phone. Mitchell Jones was immediately treated on site as best as possible and rushed to a local hospital, where doctors took every effort possible, but unfortunately, he died from multiple stab wounds. When detectives arrived, among the first things they noticed was passive blood spatter on the floor. This is an indication of blood affected by gravity and dripping straight down, unlike splatter evidence where blood has been cast outwardly, flung, or thrown. The detectives were aware that the incident took place upstairs, so this blood did not come from the victim. This blood came from someone else. Detectives stated that the biggest challenge was that the suspect took Mitchell's phone when fleeing from the crime scene. However, inside the bedroom, several other cell phones were found. Mitchell was able to call for help from one of these phones. The phone taken was his primary phone. The suspect obviously knew that that particular phone may yield some sort of evidence. The following day, detectives began canvassing the neighborhood, hoping to gain further information regarding this gruesome crime. Shortly after, detectives spotted something. Something that could give them an incredible boost to their investigation. A camera mounted on a house across the street, pointing in the direction of Mitchell's home. The home's residents, wishing to remain anonymous, did allow investigators access to the camera's footage for that day. After reviewing the footage, detectives saw a black vehicle backing out of Jones's driveway at the time of the incident. They were able to figure out that the car was a black Buick Lucerne. Police now had a time frame, a vehicle, blood samples from a suspect, but were missing a crucial piece, an actual suspect. Three months later, in February of 2019, an investigator had taken a course on cell phone investigations, learning about how to use typical cell phone data such as historical data and pings to locate a phone's whereabouts. Towards the end of the course, the instructor was teaching about a new technique called geofencing. Geofencing is achieved by establishing a perimeter around a geographical location during a certain time and day. By doing this, investigators can obtain a search warrant for service providers to determine what cell phones were in use within that perimeter and at the time of the crime. That is the moment investigators realized they now have a new tool to aid them in the Mitchell Jones murder case, which was growing cold after three months. They have the time and place of the murder. They obtained a warrant for the time and place of the incident and were able to find out that there were only four potential phones in the area at the time of the crime taking place. Two of them were elderly couples who lived in the area. Investigators immediately ruled them out, feeling that they were not physically capable of committing such an offense, given the conditions of which the crime occurred. Another phone belonged to a person that was perhaps physically able to commit the crime, but had absolutely no criminal record. The last phone, however, belonged to a man that fit the profile of the suspect. That man was Dante Holmes. Detectives had never heard of Holmes before, but began digging into his cell phone records. Things began adding up for detectives, leading them to believe that they had found their suspect. One thing found was an image that was uploaded to the cloud around the time of the murder. That image was one of Dante's foot, showing an image of an injury that he had sustained 
which was consistent with the blood evidence recovered from the scene. Detectives knew from earlier evidence that a black Buick Lucerne was seen leaving at the time of the crime, and it just so happens that Dante Holmes is known to have access on a regular basis to a black Buick Lucerne that is owned by his mother. Police were able to determine that Dante Holmes's phone, as well as Mitchell Jones's phone, were at the crime scene at the exact time of the incident. They were also able to see both phones had been traveling together immediately after, and both phones were picked up by all of the exact same cell towers all the way to Atlanta. Dante Holmes was picked up by Atlanta authorities in South Atlanta, and he was subsequently transported back to the Crimes Against Persons office for an interview. Holmes claimed self-defense in the occurrence, saying Mitchell had pulled the knife on him. After a tussle, he was able to grab the knife away from Mitchell and stab him multiple times. Holmes also told investigators that he threw the knife away. However, given the evidence at hand, such as the sheer brutality, the fact that he fled the scene and never called 911, threw the knife away, and took the victim's cell phone, all indicated that Holmes' claim of self-defense was completely fabricated. Police obtained a search warrant for Dante Holmes' home, as well as his DNA. While they weren't able to recover the phone, they did, however, make a match between Dante's blood and the blood samples from the floor of Mitchell's home. On January 6, 2020, Dante Holmes pled guilty to malice murder, aggravated assault, as well as other charges, and was sentenced to life in prison. Mitchell's father, Mitchell Jones Sr., stated to reporters that he can forgive Dante for the murder, but there is no weight off of his shoulders, further stating that he misses his son. Following this case, the use of geofencing technology has now been used multiple times in various investigations and has now become a regular tool used to assist investigators in solving crimes that were perhaps in the past difficult, if not nearly impossible, to solve. It has also become a platform to teach other agencies about its uses and benefits in both current and older cases. Investigators have never found Mitchell's phone or any other sort of communication between him and his killer and Dante Holmes has never given a motive for the murder. That wraps up today's episode on Crime Science. If you enjoyed today's story, please leave a like on the video. And if you're enjoying our content, please subscribe and turn on your notifications. By doing so, you'll be helping us to continue to bring you more exciting content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.